So one of the very big concepts we're going to be talking about in this unit is determinism and whether determinism and free will are compatible with each other. We'll see the compatibilists who argue that yes, determinism is compatible with free will, and then the other people, the incompatibilists or the hard determinists who say no, determinism is not compatible with free will. And so one natural question that we have to answer is what is determinism? What is this thing that we're talking about uh, in terms of whether it's compatible with free will? And uh, we see determinism comes up very quickly in the very first reading. It's in, I think, the third sentence. And so what is the idea of determinism? So uh, the best way to think about determinism is with the metaphor of billiards or billiard balls. So if you think about a billiards table with billiard balls, and the goal is to knock the balls into the holes on the sides of the table, um, the reason an expert in billiards can play billiards so well is that uh, you can calculate basically exactly what's going to happen to each of the balls once you hit one of the balls with a stick. So if you know that you hit a ball with a certain amount of force in a direction, you know it's going to go in that direction, and when it hits the side, you know exactly what angle it's going to bounce off. When it hits another ball, you know exactly where that ball is going to go. When that ball hits another ball, you know where they're going to go. So it's all sort of uh, determined by uh, the initial force you put in with the stick. There's not any uh, uncertainty that's going to happen. There's not any randomness that's going to happen. The balls are always going to behave in the same way when you hit them. And so determinism is a thesis about uh, the universe. It's a thesis about the world. And the thought is that everything in the world is like the billiard balls. Everything in the world behaves according to the laws of nature. And so there's no sort of uh, indeterminacy or randomness in the universe. Everything is just behaving with the laws of nature. And so the thought is that with the initial conditions plus the laws of nature, you can basically calculate out everything that's going to happen in the future. There's no um, indeterminacy there. And so the thought is the universe started long ago with the Big Bang, and after that everything has just been following the laws of nature, just like all the balls on the billiard table are just following the laws of nature when you hit them. And so you might ask, well, what exactly are the laws of nature? And the answer to that is, you know, go ask a physicist. The physicist tells us how things behave, how particles behave, and things like this. And so um, determinism says everything is just behaving those laws of physics, those laws of nature, and there's nothing up to chance, effectively. One question people sometimes have is, um, doesn't quantum physics show that there is indeterminacy? Uh, that there is randomness in the universe, that some things are up to chance or things like this. So there's debate about this topic in quantum physics and in philosophy. You can go read about this. Um, I think there is two sorts of things to say when it comes to our topic. First, you might think, look, if there is indeterminacy, it's at the quantum level, so it's very, very, very small. It's uh, happening at quantum physics sorts of things. When it comes to human beings, that kind of indeterminacy is irrelevant. So what's going on in your head when you're making decisions, your brain, all those neurons, all those particles, those are still uh, behaving the sort of normal deterministic Newtonian laws of physics. There's no indeterminacy at the level of anything that matters to you. So that's one sort of answer you could give. Another sort of answer you could give is, yes, uh, there is indeterminacy. There's randomness and stuff, and that's why there's room for free will. So some people do say this sort of thing. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Another question people sometimes have is, well, look, if I say the universe, and especially if I say us, human beings, are like the billiard balls, what I mean is that we're sort of entirely physical. So if we're all obeying the laws of nature, the laws of nature govern sort of physical things, but don't human beings have like a non-physical part, like a soul or something like this? And so the answer to that is twofold. One, a lot of people don't think we have a soul. So we did see some people who think we have a soul. So Swinburne, for instance, is a dualist. He thinks we have a soul and a body. But lots of philosophers think we are only sort of physical creatures. Either we're only our brains and our bodies, or we're only our thoughts, and our thoughts are made up of physical things. So some people just deny that we have a non-physical part. And so they say, of course, we behave the laws of physics. Um, a second sort of answer is, uh, yes, we have non-physical parts, and that's why we have free will. So for instance, Swinburne's view on free will, I'm pretty sure, is that because we have a soul, the soul does not obey the laws of physics, so no need to worry about uh, determinism. So those are two sorts of answers uh, you could give. And uh, so the, again, just to recap why this is going to matter, some people think determinism is a threat to free will. We'll see that sort of for various reasons. The compatibilists think it's not a threat. Other people think it is a threat, but um, now we sort of at least know what determinism is, so now we can start thinking about is it or is it not a threat to free will.